when Naira is going up, or Naira is now 600 or 700, you just leave everything about Naira. Leave everything about Nigeria. Come out of Nigeria. Separate from Nigeria and enter spiritual frequency. Hallelujah. When you enter spiritual frequency, if you have been following it, one, two, one, two, God will double it for you. Six, twelve, six, twelve, six, twelve, eighteen, 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 twenty-four, twenty-four, hundred, hundred, million, million, billion, billion, trillion, trillion. You fly like that. Somebody's not clapping hand there. Clap your hand for Jesus. Hallelujah. So don't allow people to bring your business now. Oh, the way the way that is no market today. I don't think say anything go. The way I'm looking at it, nothing, nothing today. You have just closed your shop. <laughs> Hallelujah. You do what? You close your shop with your mouth. Tell yourself today I will sell highest. It is today that I will have the highest customer. Then you begin to think about it and you say it with your mouth. Then the Spirit of God will make it happen. Because we are not only flesh. We are spirit beings. We are God's children. <laughs> hallelujah. Somebody hallelujah. We are God's what? We are God's what? Hallelujah. Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, look at verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you say to the mountain, be cast into the sea and you don't doubt and you believe what you have said. Brother, sister, what you said will come to pass. Whatever you say will come to pass. It is what you are saying that heaven wants to hear. The spirit wants to hear. When somebody stayed there and said, ah, that man, oh, you know, go see, any, see that man. He go, he go, he go, he go somewhere, he go cry, he go this. That one is for him, not you. If you serve a master and the master say, uh, uh, because you serve me or you do this to me or you do that to me, you know go better, go, you know go better. Don't agree with that in your spirit. We are not only flesh and blood. We are spirit beings that are children of God. If you do something physically, example, I want to carry this speaker and I try to carry it and it doesn't work. Don't say, I can't carry it. Oh, no way. I've tried to carry it. No way. I can't carry it. It's a lie. You can carry it. Bring in the spiritual. When you bring in the spiritual, don't be surprised as you try to put out. Five people will come. Uh, Brother Alpha, you won't carry them. Where you won't put them? Where you won't? Okay. Oh, yeah, carry them, follow me. They will carry it and follow you. Put it here. They will put it for you there. You are not hearing me. Are you paying attention? When something is going wrong, speak positive word there. Don't allow that sickness to kill you. Don't allow what they diagonize to destroy you. They will tell you, oh, this sickness, there's no way. Nothing you can do about it. It's impossible to cure. It's a lie. That is the simplest thing you can cure. Bring in your spiritual to it. It will go. In Jesus name. I say in Jesus name. I say in Jesus name. What about the third one? The third one is. If you want to live a life of possibility. You have to be. A prayerful somebody. Possibility prayers must be in your mouth. Don't be among the people that when they want to pray, they have already doubted the prayer. 
Ah, why, why I won't pray, self? Waiting, I won't pray. The way the matter look, waiting prayer, I won't do. You have killed the prayer before you pray. <laughs> Psalm 91. Open your Bible to Psalm 91. Look at verse 2. Look at verse 2. He said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Amen. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. I will say, I will what? I will say in my prayer, I will say of the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. Learn how to use your prayer to create the possibility around you. Look at the man called David in the Bible. David happened to come to a point when hunger wanted to kill him. He looked at himself, no food to eat. He looked at himself, he's in the wilderness. He looked at himself, he was passing difficulty. And David prayed this prayer. The same prayer happened in this Psalm 91. But I want to use Psalm 23 to illustrate it so that you yourself can begin to live a life like that. Look at what David said. When the problem and all the things, he looked at himself, no money, no food, nothing. David prayed this prayer. This is a prayer. He said in the book of Psalm 23. Psalm 23 from verse 1. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. For him to say the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He was already broke. He is already in want. Amen. 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 He just using the prayer to address the situation. He just using the prayer to address the situation. He did not come and say, oh God, I've been wanting, I've been suffering, no food to eat. Oh God, thou knowest that I have no food. Look at my bank account, no money. Landlord of said I should pack out. Look at the situation. Oh God, are you not a God? God, where are you? God, why? God, why? He did not come to pray that prayer. You see where the problem, where many of us are getting it wrong. We pray it in the negative way. We don't pray it in the positive way. When you see yourself that there is need in your life, just begin to thank God. Father, thank you because you have provided my needs. Father, I thank you because you have already healed me. I give you glory because this sickness that is tormenting me is already healed. I know you have solved the problem. This situation I find myself, Lord, I know you have brought me out of it. I am no more in this very problem. This problem has been solved by you. I thank you for you have settled the matter. You have settled the matter. Matter finish. Matter settled. You see the prayer? You did not begin to accuse God. Why? God, where are you? Why did you allow this? Where you go to, you travel, or you went to where? David began to address. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Then he went in verse 2. He said, he may get me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside still water. What is the green pasture there? Green pasture there is that he has been looking for job, for contract, for where to get something to eat, for where to make his ends living. He's been hustling about nothing. But when he wants to pray, say, God, you are my shepherd. I will not struggle I will not want to. You make get me to land in green pasture. Means that, oh God, you are the one that will take me to where I will get what I'm looking for. You are the one that will take me to where I will succeed. You will not allow me to go to where I will be toiling and struggling. He put it to God like that. That's the kind of people God wants to hear. That is what God wants to hear. He said, he leaded me beside still water. Still water means when you want to drink water, not be water, what do you do? You want to carry, you carry dust be. You want to carry, you carry dust. You want to carry, there are many things in the water. But the one that has settled down, very clean and nice, coming out of the rock, still water, he will now take it as he wants and drink. After drinking, he take as many as he wants. No dirty, nothing, nothing. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. David began to address God that way in his prayers. And he went ahead and he said, He restored my soul. He lifted me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. The soul of them means that he has already fainted. He has already given up. He has already frustrated. But God 
restored him. He said, oh God, even as I fainted, I know you will restore my soul. Thank you for restoring my soul. That's what David was praying here. That is why you need to, not only reading the Bible, when you read, put your conscience, put your mind, put your thoughts, meditate, you will see it. He said, he led me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. What is the path of righteousness? God will not allow him to commit crime that will bring destruction. God direct him how to move about, not to fall into temptation. And that's why Jesus was teaching how to pray. He said, when you pray, pray that God should not lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. There are people that wake up in the morning as they come out, they are going out. Now, problem that they go into. Some enter into problem, they never come back home. Somebody come out, dress well, enter into a vehicle, they carry her from the vehicle, kidnapped. Oh, yeah, I'm going to bring 200 million, bring 100 million, bring 50,000. Those are the prayers that Jesus was teaching. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. That's the way. So you must know what's called positivity in your prayer, possibility in your prayer. Then the last way I will now round up for the day is what is called taking positive step of faith. Possibility living is when we take positive steps of faith. Many of us are not taking step of faith. Many of us will just see something and they will end up there. I say, no, this thing, I, I, no, I don't want to, ah, oh, no, not before me. Initially, when, when they, we wanted to settle about this place, they bring up a finger that if I call the church people and say, all of you come, see what we ask us to bring. Many people will quit the church. A lot of people will never come to this church again until maybe three years when they have heard the outcome. Amen? Make it up, said they come to church, they tell them, go and bring your 10,000 naira, come. Amen? Amen? When I heard it, I said, eh, this. I went back in my spirit and God told me, said, I told you from day one that when the time will come, I will make a way. Everything you face, hey, now Goliath be this, so you don't finish now. Where am I going again? Goliath is here. Ah, <laughs> grand, I beg, open, let me bury myself. Grand, open, weak. That's how many people live their life. But they don't know that Goliath come so that you can climb the him and succeed. <laughs> Hallelujah. That thing that opposes you like this is just your stepping stone. When you pray, mountain be removed. Mountain, a mountain removed. Climb that mountain. The whole world wants to see you on top of the mountain. Hello? And then I say, if I announce this one to the church, hey, the remaining members will all run away to their tent. Oh, he said. I now take what's called positive steps. Positive steps are the step that when you are taking, you are taking it on the right direction with God. I want to build a house. I don't have the money, but I have money for foundation. Take the step of that foundation. Hello? Take the step of that eh? foundation. Don't say, ah, what will 300,000 do? Can 300,000 finish a, a, a three-bedroom flat? I beg, make a use and go buy food to eat first. You now crush that 300. But you don't know. If you put 300,000, buy blocks, buy cement, even if it's five bags of cement, call laborers. Let them work. When you finish the 300,000, you will see where the 300,000 went in. Then you go again and believe God. God, I don't start a book. Because every step, every project you start, there's what's called divine project. When you are walking by faith, you are taking a step of faith. You are on divine assignment. And anybody on divine assignment will always succeed. You want to do a business and you are taking the positive step. You will succeed. That's not how you will not succeed. You must succeed. If you are threatened with any illness, life-threatening illness, and then you go back your mind and say, God, this situation, I don't know what to do. God will drop something in your spirit. Your spirit will tell you, forget about it, it will go. Forget about it, it will what? It will go. I am a living testimony of attacks. 
When you are getting attacked, come to me, I will talk to you. That attack, if I talk to you, finish. If you attack, no go. Know that I'm not a man of God. I have had an attack in such a way that every now and then all my thoughts are concentrated on the attack. It took my thought, it took my focus, it took my everything. Everything about me is on that attack. I lived with it for many years before God salvaged me by faith. Hello? Hello? If you put your mind so much on that thing that happened to you, that pain, or the back pain, that back pain, or that uh, pain by your side, or neck, or, uh, or head, or wherever, if you put your mind too much there, that thing will take your mind and arrest your consciousness. And when it takes your consciousness every minute and down, if you want to smile, somebody is talking, you want to smile? You want to laugh? You want to laugh, it will turn into cry. You want to smile, it will turn into anger. Anything you want to do, that thing that your mind did, we always turn it. And that is where depression comes. Some people will now say, what am I living for? What am I living for? Make I go kill myself. There is nothing that happened in this world that is the first time. You know they hear me? I say nothing happened in this world that is what? It's not the first time. It has happened somewhere. Only that you don't know or you have not heard about it. Amen? So, I am admonishing you, teaching you, and ministering to you so that you begin to focus your mind on positivity. Of possibility. There is nothing in this world that is not possible. There is nothing. 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 You may be a primary school student. You have finished primary school and you want to be a president. It's possible. Amen. 